Well, hello again. It is me, your friendly neighborhood coding person who makes lots of mistakes and always gets stuck even when said person thinks it's gonna be really simple and just take about 20 minutes and takes four hours later and then I haven't had dinner and I get very exhausted and I have to go home and then I feel depressed all weekend because my coding was terrible and uh, it was so much better. It could have been so much better. <sighs> I'm back. Now, you might not be aware of this if you were watching, but I live streamed already today for, a pr I would say, almost three hours. So I started around 10, 30, 10, 45, and I finished around 1.30. I did take a 20 minute break in there because I had an important phone call. Uh, I don't have any important phone calls as far as I know, although where is my phone? That is an interesting question. Came up here to this room, and I usually take my phone out of my pocket. Then I, uh, uh, because I have to put this microphone thing in my pocket. <laughs> you have just tuned into a live stream about a person has lost their phone. <laughs> Let's see, it could be over here underneath my books and notes. I, I took some more notes for today. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, where is it? There's, a, there's an iPad here where I play some sound cues. This is weird. This is a little distressing. I did recently use the loo, which is a term that I like to use, and could I have left it? Here, hold on a second, everybody. <laughs> Let's make my phone play some loud noises. I'll do it over here. I'm going to do that find my phone. I can't believe this is what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I have it on silent. So I have to log into um, <coughs> this like, uh, uh. <laughs> this is really what I'm doing right now. I don't even know why. Okay. Thank goodness for one password, not a sponsor. Could be a sponsor. Uh, allow. Done. Oh, no, wait. No, no. Just, uh, there we go. Okay. All right, I'm about to play a very loud noise. It won't be loud for you, hopefully. Hopefully it'll be loud for me. You know what? I think I just left it in my office downstairs. I think I just plugged it into my office to charge, and then when I came up here, I didn't bring it with me. I think that's it. I think it's as simple as that. We're just gonna check to make sure it's not in the hallway. It's playing the sound now. I'm gonna check to make sure it's not in the hallway. in the hallway, just looking around in the hallway. I left the door of the streaming room open. <laughs> just gonna check in this room here where I was. There's no reason I would've taken it out of my pocket in here. All right, all right. I'm feeling pretty confident that I left it. I'm also, look, people are looking at me like I'm talking to myself, which I am. Uh, I feel pretty confident that I left, just left it downstairs, which is fine. <laughs> oh, 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 oh dear, okay. <laughs> Hello again, welcome to your regularly scheduled coding train. Now, I was saying that this morning, <laughs> it's definitely in this building because it's at the same location that I am. Okay, um, let me go back to, um, so now this morning I did something which I felt was like very exciting and I need to turn this camera on, oh, it is on. I need to switch to that camera. Oh, I still have a cold where I talked about test-driven development with unit testing and continuous integration. And I'm, I'm like saying this with like this big giant grin on my face because I'm so shocked that this is a thing that I actually just did because I, I, I know that many viewers who might be work as their job doing actual software development, this is a fundamental and key piece to your workflow. Many of you who volunteer or on open source projects also collaborate through uh, and, and your projects that you're involved with run tests and run uh, continuous integration processes. But it is not something that I've had a lot of experience with in my, uh, let me just make like some pretty rainbow colors on the screen, <laughs> twirl around and uh, talk about objects and arrays kind of world that I live in. So I was excited to look at this workflow. Um, Number one is I would like to use this channel as a way of helping people to contribute to open source projects. So understanding something about uh, unit tests and continuous integration is important. It's a key piece of a lot of projects. And also I would like to start incorporating it into the community projects that I open up with this channel. So one community project that I am working on is a simple, and I'm calling it now a toy neural network library. And um, I don't have anything open, 
But if I open up Adam, it should open up to where I last left off. And as you might recall, part of that toy library is a toy. <laughs> I'm just going to put the word toy in front of everything because it'll just make it sound like I, didn't, I don't have to worry about that I've done it like incorrectly and it's like a problem. Um, my toy matrix library um, is this first attempt to start um, working with some tests. So if you didn't watch this morning, one of the things that I did is I added instead of just matrix.js, I added matrix.test.js. This has a unit test which runs uh, let's say the add function and make sure the correct output comes out. And then I put all this on GitHub where it now lives. If I open up my uh, browser here and I look for toy neural network. And so here's the thing. I, um, there's been a bunch of pull requests here. Let's see. Hmm. I think I want to go through the pull request later because what I want to do is work on the gradient descent problem which is the where I left off off, and this is, this is why, I don't know. There's never a good time, right? I sort of felt like, okay, I need to find that day where I didn't have a busy week, and I had all morning to read about gradient descent and sip some tea and relax, do some deep breathing, come up here and just like work through it and go have a nice relaxing weekend. Today wasn't that day. I was live streaming, I was having meetings, I had this phone calls, I had this, uh, uh, uh. but anyway, might as well give it a try. So I, I anticipate this going very poorly, so I, um, lower ex the key to life is lower expectations, <laughs> lower your expectations. But I do have a goal at least, even if I don't do a good job with maybe a tutorial about gradient descent and backpropagation, that I at least get it working and that I can move forward and start to make some projects with the library itself. And then also, as I've mentioned before, start using a, another library called deeplearn.js, um, which is an open source. Um, deep learning library uh, put out by some uh, uh, researchers at Google. So I don't want to be stuck here anymore. I don't want to be stuck at the gradient descent step. So we'll see. Can I, instead of gradient descent, this is gradient, I'm going to climb the gradient descent hill and get to the top. Cheer, and then I'm going to just roll down. Momentum is a thing, right? The gradient descent thing with momentum, that's a thing, that's a thing that I won't be able to explain in a way that makes sense either. Because this is going to go very poorly. <clears throat> okay. So, um, oh, I didn't, did I tweet? No, I did tweet. Um, so I, I, I have a feeling there's like fewer people watching because I think I used up all of my like live stream notifications on YouTube. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, so that's what I'm planning to do. I do want to look through these unit tests, um, I mean these pull requests, but I think for those of you, thank you. Let me just quickly thank Make1999, MDATSEV, MTR Nord, Musabiklik. Adantor, sorry that I didn't pronounce any of those names correctly, uh, GitHub usernames. I want to say, if you wouldn't mind, uh, I'm happy to, for the, to review these pull requests. I wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to work on the code some more and push up new code. So that might, you'll just have to check your pull requests again if there's any um, conflicts based on some of the new stuff that I'm adding. Because if I go through and check everything to merge now, I think I would lose time. I don't want to get to the great set. I do want to ask a question though, because I did notice here that this particular uh, merge request uh, moves all of the uh, source files into a source folder and then the test file into a test folder. And my understanding was that um, with Jest, Jest, the way that Jest is structured is actually is to get away from this having to maintain totally duplicate directory structures and you can actually keep your tests with your code. You can use directories but you're supposed to use like underscore underscore test in the directory where your source is. So I'm not sure about this but um, if anybody like uh, feels like they actually know what they're doing with um, Jest and test different development want to like write a comment on this pull request and give me some thoughts about that, um, please let me know. Uh, all right, so I'm going to put the, put the GitHub away. I'm going to go to localhost. There's nothing there, probably. I'm going to go to terminal. And where am I? I'm going to go to the desktop. And, and this is now GitHub repository, which is good. Uh, I'm going to run a local server. So I will not be doing any... By the way, somebody said to me that test-driven development means you write the tests first. Well, okay. First of all, it's, I mean, I should be so happy that I'm using tests in the first place. So I guess I have to get to a whole other level of actually writing the test first. But I'm, you know, in creative coding, which is, all coding is a little bit of a silly term, a problematic term, but I, I like to use it in the sense of just sort of like quickly reference the kind of stuff that I do with 
graphics and animation and interaction. But I do think there is an aspect of not knowing what you're making while you're making it. So maybe you can't really do the tests until after you've figured out what you're making. Maybe. Um, okay. Um, I have a, can you hear that I have a cold? This is great. I have my back propagation videos forever having a cold. Okay. Now, um, what's happened here? Matrix is not defined. Huh? Failed to load resource. Am I actually... What is this nonsense? What's going on here? Okay, fine. Can't remember, I'm running the server. Okay, let's just minimize this. So I have this weird thing, I don't know why, why do I have this again? Because I had, I have to figure out where I last left off. Oh yeah, this is me trying to actually implement it. And this is actually where I last left off after, like these are the output errors and these are the hidden errors. Okay. Okay. So this is what I want to be working with. I'm going to temporarily, oh yeah, here's what I said. Next, redo gradient descent video about delta weight formulas. Okay. Implement gradient descent in library. Talk about different activation functions, XOR, MNIST. Okay, there's no way I'm getting through all this today. But, um, uh, I'm still not using high term yet. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so this is where I am. Did I already have this D sigmoid in there and already? Sig no. Oh, that's a neural network too. Okay. So I think what I want to do is um, just for clarity's sake, um, I'm going to take this file out and put it somewhere else. Like on the desktop, okay. So now there is, okay, now, and what's actually in sketch.js? Oh, just running that training function, okay. Uh, so no errors, some warnings I don't care about. And um, neural network library and the training function. Okay. Ah, okay. Now, simple recommendation: Control A, delete. Okay. Uh, all right. Now let me go over here. So I'm very sad to erase this, but I think it's time. Uh, I have completed the set of test-driven development videos. I did not make the one about having a bot tweet whenever your tests pass. I would like to have that happen. I will come back to that. There was so much I didn't anticipate. I really thought I was just making one or two, like two or three little short videos. I think it turned into like four. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to erase this with this eraser. Uh, already? I've been up here for a half an hour getting ready. Um, let's clean this a little bit with some water. Okay, um, I think I'm about ready to get started. I have some resources to point out to you about, about this topic. One of which is ML4A. Um, is it just, let's just Google that, ML4A. I want the uh, yep, ml4a.github.io. This is a website uh, put together by Gene Kogan, who if you're interested in machine learning, knows a lot more about this than I do. <laughs> Uh, and under here there are instructional guides, mm, so many things, Keras, TensorFlow, Open Frameworks, Demos, Classes, Code. What I'm looking for is the recent one that was just published 
about how neural networks are trained. Okay. So this is a resource. I was just looking at this like a half an hour ago, so I didn't really get to get through all of it. Um, but this is a good supplemental resource that will go deeper than what I'm going to do. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the three blue, one brown videos. Um, and I'm going to go to... Um, by the way, I've just decided in this, I now have a YouTube Red account for a <laughs> Google account. But don't, you can email there, I'll never see it. I never check that. I just like made a Google account just for being logged in while I'm in a live stream if I need to do stuff. <laughs> and then I signed up for YouTube Red because the ads don't show. But I don't actually watch YouTube on this, so it's very weird that I have this. Anyway, that's just a little, little, little behind the scenes <laughs> tidbit for you. Uh, where is the um, playlists? Essence of the essence calculus, neural networks. Okay, I want to reference this particular playlist, uh, and then there is the um, then there is the what's the other thing? Ah, uh, make your own. So Amazon.com/shop/coding/train. There is the make your own neural network book that I will mention. Okay. I've got a lot more books I want to add to this page. Um, so incidentally, if you do, I'll just mention it, if you do your start your shopping on Amazon here, it will support the channel. So thank you for doing that for those of you who are, buy stuff on Amazon and are able to. Um, okay, let's see. All right, so... All right, I have to um, like center myself. So where I last left off, if I recall, was just working on the hidden errors and the output errors. So looking at those. And I don't think, I think I can't do this anymore. I think I'm going to have to do the, these steps because I'm going to want to use some of this stuff. So that's fine. I have to figure out how to do the bias. The nature of code, uh, is the nature of code on Amazon? In fact, it is. I'll just go back to here, and there is a link to it here. It actually says $9.99, which is, I don't know why it says that. That's for the Kindle. You can get the Kindle book version for free if you just go to my website if you want to get it on Amazon. But um, there's a print version. I don't know why. Maybe I just, I probably did that incorrectly where, oh, who am I logged in as? Hello, I'm not logged in. Um, I need to fix that probably so that it um, links to the paperback version. 65 customer reviews, wow. Okay, hold, sorry, sorry, sorry. okay. <laughs> oh no, I needed that page. Because uh, I'm gonna reference that book, although I have a physical copy of that book. But it's open to a certain page, and um, I don't want to, uh... all right, so I have some notes. Made some notes. <laughs> I suck and I don't want to do it. Uh, <clears throat> Made some notes. I have this book. I sleep with it under my pillow at night. And I hope that it speaks to me in the night and tells me about how things work so that when I wake up in the morning, my brain will understand it. But it just doesn't. It's just too hard. <clears throat> but this is the book that I, I found very helpful. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And um, I should also reference... Uh, um, Siraj, who makes lots of uh, uh, wonderful videos about AI and machine learning as well. Um, okay, so these are the tools though, these are the resources I've been using for like the ver the step by step building all the code for the neural network thing. Oh, the book was over the mic. Oh, maybe that's what I could use. I'm trying to figure out, there's like a thing that people do if you're a person who speaks with a microphone, you can kind of like simulate a funny yelling thing and then move the microphone away and it sounds like you're shouting it from far away, but if I just shout, it's right here. So I guess I could do this. I'm really upset! I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right, so, oh, now what I need. <laughs> YouTube Shiftman. Uh, mathematics of gradient descent. Ding, 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 ding. This is really a problem. 
I think it's though just because I googled the exact title of my video. Most people probably don't google mathematics of gradient descent, but something is really wrong with the world if this comes up. <laughs> that, was a, that was a disaster. Uh, what if I just do gradient descent? Yeah, okay. Oh no! Oh god! <laughs> oh, somebody call YouTube and tell them their algorithm. I mean, this is good. This is good, 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 good. Here you go. We've got some solid educational content here. This is a problem. Oof. Oh, where, what's happened? Oh, there we go. And look, Suraj is here. So this, this I also would highly recommend. Ooh, ooh look, it's like formulas. Ooh, ooh, you can hover over it and the video starts to like play. Was this made with a broke, before broken arm or after broken arm? I can't, can't figure out. It's a mathematics career. Seven months ago. <laughs> no, that's gotta be, I don't know, who knows? Yeah, that's gotta be pre-broken arm because I wasn't making any videos for, anyway. Um, 20 minutes this stream, a couple hours. Will you change the, to the dark side of YouTube? There's a dark side of YouTube? Or you just mean my, th my theme? <laughs> How do I do that? I would love to. Anyway, I don't know, you're distracting me. <clears throat> it's 420. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got to get out of here by like six o'clock. Got to, you know, I think, you know, anytime I'm live streaming more than five hours in one given day, it's nothing good is going to happen. I did take a break, but I'm, we're on to like hour four here, basically. All right, uh, we're gonna go to this video. And guess what? Let's go back. And let's try to find a little like spot where I just end and have the formulas on the screen. Hmm. Boy, I'm very red. Look how red I am in there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you want to hit like or subscribe, but honestly, totally, totally understand. So do I want the whiteboard image to finish with? Yeah, let's do this. This makes it look like I might have done something that made sense. <sighs> okay. All right. Click your purple human icon, then click dark theme. Ooh, ooh, dark theme. Ding, ooh, ah! <laughs> YouTube dark theme, gradient descent. Spooky, spooky dark theme, gradient descent notes. I, I don't know. It's, I, 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 I like the dark theme for myself, but I feel like it looks weird in my, it's so dark. There's no rainbow theme. Ooh, it's an experience ideal for night. It saves eyes, okay, okay. But I'm not gonna be on this page for very long. All right, uh, <laughs> I have to start this video. All right, I'm so not prepared for this. I'm so in the wrong screen. All right, let us begin. You are now watching somebody pace in order to avoid having to start talking about this. All right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Here we are again. Whew, deep breath. Um, I'm going to talk in this video. I'm going to try to get to the next step of gradient descent. And I, to be honest, what I, what I hope by the time that you've finished watching this video, I'll have implemented gradient descent and it'll be working in this uh, JavaScript neural network library that we are all building together as a happy internet family. <laughs> Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is see, uh, my plan here is to, um, it's getting loud in the hallway. Let me just start over, please. I, I, for some reason, at the, um, I always need like the first video. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. I just kind of, I should probably watch the end of my last back propagation video, but
All right, all right, all right, everybody. Here we go. Uh. Hello. All right. This is a, a good moment for me, I think. Um, I'm excited to see if I can get through this video because if I can implement this last piece of the train function in the neural network library, then I'll have a working version of some kind of neural network library-like thing that I can start to finally apply to some projects. And it's my goal, actually, that in some of the future videos I make that make use of the library and eventually other more sophisticated machine learning and deep learning libraries like deeplearn.js, and a new library, which I think is now going to be called ML5, which I'll, I'll talk about in another video, that I'll be able, really what I'm excited about is to make stuff and show you how to make stuff. But I'm, I'm kind of working through this because it's just, it's just something I have to do. So I started, I have to finish. <laughs> I'm just trying to like vamp till you stop, move on and watch something else because I'm not sure you should continue. So but let's, let me try to, uh, since it's actually been a while since I recorded the previous video, unfortunately, I might be watching them one after another. Let me try to like reset kind of where I think that we are. So we have a, uh, uh, something like a two-layer network. Um, it has you know, an input, quote unquote, air quote layer. It has the, so these are the inputs. This is the hidden. And this is the output. It is fully connected, meaning every input is connected to every hidden. And every output is connected to every, every hidden is connected to every input, every output is connected to every hidden, and so the outputs come out here, the inputs come out here. All of these connections have a weight, so, and we can consider them in a weight matrix, and I guess I should put this stuff back in here. Weight, um, if this is like input one, two, three, this is hidden one, two, this is weight one to one, this is weight two to one, this, this, so these all end up in a nice weight matrix. These end up in a weight matrix. The outputs come out, oh boy, in an array, like uh, y1, y2, a vector. The inputs come in in a vector x1, x2, x3. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting back into this. <laughs> I didn't even draw like off the top. Wonderful. So now, the idea is we want to do training, and the kind of training that I'm doing right now is called supervised learning, where I have some known output, I have some known inputs with known outputs, inputs with target outputs. I send the inputs in, I feed them forward, I get some actual guess output back, and I have some sort of error, which we can think of as the error equals the um, Guess, I mean, um, I'm gonna, the guess minus the target. So I'm gonna say like y minus target, okay? So this is the error. Now, I should have mentioned before that there are a variety of ways to train a neural network. To, uh, the, the idea of training is adjusting the weights to get results that are more close to the actual, <laughs> let me say that again. Um, <clears throat> and by training, I mean adjusting all of these weights, like they're knobs, to try to actually get the matched target output when you send in the training data. So one thing I should mention, I really gotta like even just take a minute to make a video just about this, but in most training situations, you'll have training data, test data, and then of course, there's the actual unknown data. So we want, to say, we want to say like, oh, here's some labeled data. I'm going to use that to train. But I need to save some of that labeled data because what if I train my neural network only to work with the training data, but it doesn't actually work with any other data? Well, I can determine that by giving it some, saved some data that I didn't train it with, but I know the answer to see how it does with that. And that's how we can evaluate it. So I just wanted to mention that this is going to be the process. Now this idea of back propagation with gradient descent is one technique, and it's a technique, uh, I'll put some links in this video's description, you can read about the history of it. It's, it's been around for a long time, it was a big innovation in training neural networks. Um, but there is a lot of questions as to whether that's optimal, best, for the, the future, et cetera. There's different you know, tweaks of these algorithms. And I actually, next probably, after I get through this, plan to use a genetic algorithm to evolve the weights of a neural network, which opens up the door for a lot of kinds of projects that I'm excited to try to make. 
So all that aside, <laughs> here we are. What did we get so far? We figured out, in the previous video, we calculated this error, and then we calculated the hidden error, which I'll just call H error. Right? That's part of back propagation. It's, well, we have this error. How do we distribute this error all around so we can adjust all these weights? The reason why we're doing this is because we actually did this already twice. I've done this twice. Once with, if you look at my videos about a single perceptron, right, which gets two inputs. I forgot about the bias. I, I, always, I, always, I can never remember the bias. I am biased against the bias. I'll come back to that. But the single perceptron, which just takes in two inputs, and one output, well it doesn't have to take, it's a single neuron, it can take in more than two inputs, but a single neuron with multiple inputs and an output. Um, I actually did this, we did this idea of training this with gradient descent, and we also did it, I did it, we, <laughs> I did it in a video about um, linear regression, where if I have a bunch of points in a two-dimensional space, I can find the line that fits these points the best. And I did this. What's interesting here is though, this, so first of all, linear regression, if you recall, you, there's actually a mathematical formula to just compute the exact line of best fit. It's called ordinary least squares. I think I went through that in a previous video as well. But the idea here, and so the idea here is we're trying to figure out y equals mx plus b, the formula for this line. Well, basically, what this is doing is this is exactly the same process that we needed here, only we have um, these weights, um, you, can uh, you can almost think of this as like M and this is B maybe or something if there's just one input and a bias. We had to fit, we had to fit all the stuff coming through here into a line. Well, this is actually what we need to do with all of these, all of these places, right? We basically need to do the exact same algorithm that we did for this one line to compute. This is the weight. And this is the bias. What we really have, right, is not y equals mx plus b. We have y equals m1x1 plus m2x2 plus m3, can you see that? x3 plus m4x4, blah, 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 plus b. We have this, we basically have exactly the same problem, but in a multi-dimensional space. So I just need to figure out how do I adjust each one of these, m1, m2, m3, m4, and b, all of these weights inside of the matrix. So the same training method I did for linear regression, gradient descent, the same thing we did with the perceptron, we now need to apply it here in this multi-dimensional space. So what should I do next? Now, first of all, I forgot to thank a bunch of the resources. Error is usually target minus y. I know, why is that? But I thought, yeah, that's why I thought it's target minus y. But, um, but I thought then last time people told me it was y minus target. All right, fine. <laughs> Hold on, I, uh, I, um, some viewers rightly pointed out that when I did this previously, and I guess the convention, is target minus y. The nice thing about this is when uh, we look at what a cost function is, if you look at a cost function for um, a machine learning system, uh, If you, look at a, if you look at a cost function for a machine learning system, you'll see that uh, the cost function is the sum of all the errors squared. So if you do target minus y or y minus target and you square it, it doesn't really matter, but it is an important distinction probably. Uh, you have to get it right, of course, <laughs> otherwise you might start training in the wrong direction as you'll start to see as we do other stuff. Okay. Let me come over here and let me think. So I'm gonna come back to this video in a second. But let me first say, there are three things. One is, this is a new resource that just came, well, it's not a new resource, but a new page on the ML4A, uh, ml4a.github.io site. Um, this is a site put together by Gene Kogan. It has a ton of machine learning resources, videos, examples, demos, et cetera. It's amazing. Um, and there is a nice article here about uh, how neural networks are trained with a lot more detail than I'm gonna get into here. But you can see the same sort of idea of talking about linear regression, a loss function, adding more dimensions. This is the idea, this is what we're doing. Of course, uh, I highly recommend you watch the Three Blue One Brown series about rating descent, back propagation, and back propagation calculus. This will give you a, a massive extreme uh, set background for what I'm going to attempt to do. It's just kind of like, let me just type this in code, and like kind of squint, and then press a button and hope it works. Um, so this is great. 
I highly recommend this. And then I also have been using the Make Your Own Neural Network book, which I could hold up and wave around for you um, by Tariq Rashid. Uh, and there's a link to it on the Coding Train Amazon shop, along with some other books that I've uh, been using for videos. Um, and then, so this is where, uh, what I wanted to do now is try to connect back to here. This is from my previous video entitled The Mathematics of Gradient Descent, where I go through a long algorithm to arrive at a very simple result. And that simple result is the following. Time out for a second. Um, I'm just, sorry, I want to pull up the code for that. Where would that be? Is it in Rainbow Code Coding Challenges? Gradient, did I, linear regression? Where did I put the code for linear regression with gradient descent? Oh, it's with my um, intelligence and learning class. Uh, Where is that silly repository, intelligence? There it is. Mm, classification regression, linear regression, interactive, regression loop. Mm. Is this with gradient descent or with, yeah. Oh, when I'm doing it like, yeah, okay. Target minus, all right. Okay. Yeah, there's also the perceptron, but I'm gonna, I did the perceptron in, in processing, which is probably a mistake now that I think about it because all of this whole series is in JavaScript, but um, okay. So. So all of this math boiled down to a simple formula, which is uh, in the case of y equals mx plus b, what I'm looking to do is calculate the change in m and the change in b. And so we can now write those formulas over here. I'm going to keep this, oh, I'm in the wrong, that's fine. We can now write those formulas over here. Um, so in the case of y equals mx plus b, we need to calculate delta m. How do we want m to change based on the error? And it, the, how we want m to change is the learning rate. By the way, learning rate, if you look in textbooks and stuff, is sometimes written with this, um, uh, the Greek letter alpha, I believe. Um, is that alpha? Yeah. <laughs> learning rate times x times error. And delta b equals learning rate times error. This is all done through some calculus in looking at the cost function, looking at the derivative of the cost function, the slope, and how to walk around that cost function and find the bottom, the minimum error. How, what values of m and b do we have to have the minimum error? And that's what we want to do here. What values of w, w11, w21, w31, w41, w51, 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 have to have the minimum error? And that error, each individual error, we've got to like back it up and pass it around and chop it up. Okay, so how do we take this and move this to a multi-dimensional scenario? So let me time out here for a second. Um, <laughs> let me time, I, I, I timed out, I timed out, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. Um, let me look in my notes here. Yeah, so I started doing like the partial derivative stuff. I think what I wanna just do is try to write out the formula. First of all, did I get those formulas correct? <laughs> X times error times learning rate. X times error times learning rate, okay. Error times learning rate, error times learning rate. Okay, great. So what I want to do is, okay, hidden to output. No, input to hidden. 
Hidden to output, okay. Uh, um, I'm sorry, I'm this, okay. Do I have enough space on the board? I'm gonna rewrite these. This doesn't have to be, it could just be an edit point here. Just say here. I'm gonna rewrite these a little smaller, further over to the left, so I have more room to write out the formulas for the matrix version. say it was learning rate times x times error delta b equals learning rate times error okay so these are the formulas for the change in slope and change in by offset the change in m and change in b for y equals mx plus b so I have the same situation, except I have a slightly different one. I have like the output equals sigma of like that whole, you know, weight matrix. Uh, what is it? Matrix product with the, uh, well, I guess it's uh, uh, with the inputs, right? I have this kind of formula. This is basically the same thing plus the bias plus the bias, which is a vector. So I have like kind of like basically the same thing, but instead of like single dimension, these are all matrices, multi, multi-dimensional. So what I'm going to attempt to do now is I'm going to just write out a notation for these formulas using matrices and try to like compare and contrast a little bit. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna get it right <laughs> because I'm kind of, I'm using a combination of trying to keep consistent with my notation from before and some conventions, but let's see, I've got it written down here. Let's look at this. So let's first just say, I just wanna figure out delta for these weights. So in other words, you can think of what I'm doing is instead of just delta M, I want all of these weights. So I wanna say delta, all of the weights, and the weights are from hidden to output. The change in each weight I, J, each row, I, column, J, I think that's what I've been using. Mm, it's hard for me to remember what I used in the last video. Equals, and this is gonna look very similar. First of all, learning rate, same, always have a learning rate. Learning rate's gonna basically tune like how big of a step are we gonna take. Um, and I, I don't like the way, I, I kinda wanna rewrite this just because <laughs> to have it match the way I'm gonna write the matrix version. Error times X. I'm going to write this times the vector e, right? That's that's the uh, that's the vector of output one minus um, target one, output two, or target one minus output one, right? That error vector that I've talked about. Um, um, uh, hold on. And then. X in this case is kind of like the um, input, the input to this neuron, to each of this output layer. So I'm gonna call that, a, in this form, I'm gonna call that like, I could call it X, but I'm gonna call it H. It's what's coming out of the hidden layer. I'm gonna put that uh, here. I'm gonna put that at the end, um, H. So these are the components that exactly match up here, um, times H, right? We have same way of learning rate, we have the error, Right? And by the way, if I were doing this for this layer, if I would say delta w weights from i to j from input to hidden, i h, would equal the learning rate, and then I would say times the hidden error. Right? Do you remember that from the previous videos where I went through how to get the output error and the hidden error, how we pass all that around? And then this is times the input. So this is the same exact formula, but two different layers. Learning rate, uh, errors or hidden errors 
the hidden output or the input output. <laughs> sort of weird to say the hidden output. The hidden output is the input to the output. The input is the input to the hidden. So you can sort of see how this is, this formula is, is looking at this part and this formula is looking at this part. Okay. But I didn't put one other thing in here. There's something funny that's going to go in this spot right here. I'm going to pause for a second because I'm, I'm trying to see if nobody has complained yet. Rows as I and columns as J. Did, yeah, Robert Swain says Dan's been using rows as I and columns as J, which I think is probably incorrect. <laughs> but that is how I've been doing it. So is that, do you recall, is that how I did it in the previous videos? I hate to have that inconsistency. Um, but I think that's how I've been doing it. Um. You have the code in front of you. Okay, great. So, unfortunately, okay. So, what goes here? Well, here's, here's the thing. Something that is quite different about the linear regression with gradient descent that I looked at before and the way these neural networks work is that there's this activation function. And we want to kind of understand well, when I adjust the weight, what does that do? Does it push it which way in terms of the activation function? And so the activation function being, if I can like find a place to write this, being sigmoid, what we actually need to include here is the derivative of sigmoid, right? We need to look at um, what um, the change in, um, let's see, what's a good way of saying this? I'm trying to like sort of intuitively explain why the derivative of sigmoid makes it in right here. Maybe somebody will have a suggestion for that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm looking at the chat to see if anybody has like a really nice way. And then I need to find uh, derivative uh, I'm trying to like not derive the formulas basically because I, I read through a bunch of different um, tutorials that do that. I just think it's I'm never going to do a good job on this channel. So I just want to sort of like put the formulas out there and implement them in code. Um, so I want to um, is this a good yeah this is um, is the slope of the gradient, thank you. Yeah, it's really the gradient, it's the slope of the gradient. Um, where, I guess I'll just look at this page here. No. Uh, I, I, why am I looking for a page? I'm just going to write this out. Um, yeah, so, I, so people are saying like, oh, you have to explain the chain rule and partial driven. I did actually go through a bunch of that stuff in previous videos, and I don't want to just get into rehashing it again here. Um, I just feel like, I, and I'm, maybe I would come back again once I get further along to try to do some more derivation stuff, but I feel like there are better resources out there that do this if we can just kind of agree on a notation and kind of understand the pieces of it um, and get implementing, I think that's best. Um, so, uh, yeah, because I'm just not gonna make like, <laughs> someday I will be a different person and make those tutorials. Um, by the way, this morning I did have a sponsor for the coding train, Circle CI, but we're back again. Coding train, sponsored by. Ah, water. <laughs> All right. Um. 
need to calculate the gradient and the deltas separately. Delta M is the derivative of Y, so you need the derivative of sigmoid. Yes. 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 Thank you. That's a good way of thinking about it. All right. So what goes here? Well, if you recall, what, well, a lot of what I used in this previous video where I went through the mathematics of gradient descent was this idea of a derivative, the slope. Well, the derivative, you have to remember that uh, delta y, <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? Gradient delta separately. <laughs> it was such a nice little <laughs> delta m, that's what I meant to say. Um, So the, so, so the change in a given weight, you need the derivative of y, and we've got, we get the output from the sigmoid. So do we need this idea of the gradient. We need this idea of the gradient, which is the slope of the sigmoid function. So we need the derivative of the sigmoid function. No, no, no. <laughs> Try this again. Yeah. I just want to like succinctly say it. Maybe you can plot the derivative of sigmoid to show what it's doing. That's a good idea. But meaning is useful for understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to just say this succinctly um, uh, in a way that makes sense. The derivative of sigmoid indicates its confidence. It can descend or ascend to confidence based on the learning. Uh, oh, that's a, I like that. Medin gives me a great, I know, I, I just don't even want to be in the frame right now. I'm going to leave it over there while I read the chat. I like, that's a nice way of saying it. All right. Because ultimately, this is exactly the same so far. But in this case, because it was linear, <gasps> the derivative of y is 1, because it was linear. And here, I've got the sigmoid function, so I need the derivative. Is that kind of it? Because in this case, I really have like sigmoid around this. So I need the derivative of that, which is, yeah, I think that makes sense. You need to show how W is connected to the error. Yes, yes, I showed that previously, but writing it down is probably a good idea. Yes, yes, okay. Thank you. That's why. Okay. Okay. The derivative of Y is M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've got that. It's not, is, is M, but uh, um, yes, yes. Well, the derivative of Y with respect to, uh, the partial derivative with respect to M is X, which is actually what's going on here. <laughs> I'm in the wrong screen. All right. But, all right. Um, I have to confuse myself again. I thought I had it for a second. All right. <laughs> so what goes here? Again, these formulas are the same so far. I have the learning rate, I have the error. This is one dimension, but I have a single learning rate. I have the error, which is a vector. I have the input, x, and the stuff coming out of hidden is the input to the output. <laughs> so I have that here. So what goes here? Well, one thing you might remember, if you looked at the mathematics of gradient descent, is the derivative is kind of important. And if I take the derivative here, the derivative of y, it's m with respect to x. But the derivative of, uh, M, sorry, the, the, hold on. I think what I want to say is I take the derivative of y with respect to m, right? This says, as I did this before, I had partial derivatives. I'm just going to end up with x, which is kind of what's going on here. But there's the sigmoid function here. There's no sigmoid function here. So what I really need is something else here that helps me, and I need to add in the derivative of the sigmoid function. And guess what? 
we are so lucky. So here's the thing. Sigmoid, I, I should have mentioned this before. Sigmoid function is not a commonly used activation function anymore. Or it's not the, sort of known to be an optimal one. There's relu, and for the French for rectified linear unit, which, and there's also tan h. There's lots of other activation functions, and I'll come back to some of those, especially as we get into some more real world examples. But sort of in the classical historical sense, I'm going to stick with sigmoid, and the nice thing about sigmoid is it's so easy to differentiate. Because sigmoid of x, the derivative, which you sometimes can write as like s, that little lo line thing, tick, what do you call that again? <laughs> of x, the derivative of, of sigmoid equals, why can I never remember this? I think it's just sigmoid of x times 1 minus sigmoid of x. And I went off the board there, but let me check to make sure that's right. Um, Oh, uh, prime, prime. It's called prime. The tick is called prime, yes. Hold on, I'm gonna rewrite that. Let me just make sure I got that right. Uh, sigmoid. Um, I'm over here, by the way. That's what I wrote, right? Okay, hold on. Let me try this again since I wrote off the board and also I was told this is called prime. What I like to call tick is called prime. So we write this again. The derivative of sigmoid, sigmoid prime x equals s the sigmoid function times 1 minus the sigmoid function. I just checked. So this is actually really easy and this is what goes right here. So we need to, <coughs> we need to put in, I have this here, now, what, what is, well, I, I, and this, by the way, the sigmoid function, this is the thing I've already calculated. That's what's coming out of here. No, no, wait, 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 sorry. <laughs> the sigmoid, no, no, I want the sigmoid of the output, which is here, sorry. The why, why, sorry. The sigmoid function is something we've already calculated. That is what's coming out of here. So what I simply need is to multiply this by the output times 1 minus the output. So this is the final formula. What I need to do is I need to adjust each weight according to, we can like look at the components of this. I definitely need to adjust it according to the learning rate because that's just a thing that I'm going to say big steps, little steps. I need to adjust it according to the error. And then this, the derivative of the sigmoid function, the slope of the gradient kind of gives me some, I, I think somebody in the chat used the word confidence, <laughs> right? How, what do I do? What, what, how, is, how, does, how does sigmoid change if I move this direction or that direction? And then, according to the mathematics of gradient descent, I need to also multiply by what was coming in. So I think now, and, and down here, what this is going to be is it's the output of the hidden function. So the hidden function times 1 minus hidden. So I spent a very long time kind of just writing these formulas here. And, I, and I'm also going to have to maybe do some matrix transposition, move stuff around so that it works. <laughs> but so let me actually just pause and end this video right here. Um, and in the next video, what I'm going to do is go back and examine my matrix library, go back and look at my neural network code, and see if I can take these, the, these formulas and get them working in the code. Let's see here. Um, I don't know. What did I, what did I mess up? That was pretty poor. Oh, um, you need to multiply, uh, uh, phrase of the day, let me just pause. Yeah, of course I should be doing this in Python. Hello? <laughs> I should not be, there's no reason at any realm whatsoever I should be doing what I'm doing. Um,
Oh, I, I was, Kay Weekman in the chat wrote, this is my final formula, but was making a joke, and I was like, oh, you have a final formula? I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I was waiting to see it. <laughs> um, okay. All right. So I'm going to just kind of leave that as it is. Uh, I mean, it definitely could get edited together. It was pretty awkward, but um, this is not my best work. I can always come back and try to do it again, but that's why I want to separate these into two different videos. I just want to see, does anybody have any real problems with this notation before I move on? Because it's possible that I would kind of try to do this explanation over again, because <laughs> most of that video is me like reminding myself where I last left off, which is probably unnecessary. Um, but I just want to get, anybody have any comments on this notation before I move on? Oh yeah, the bias. <laughs> I forgot about the bias. Yeah, I gotta put the bias in there. I'll come back and do that. Oh. What time is it? Five o'clock. Um. Yeah, target is the error, yeah. The cost is target minus y squared, the sum of all that. Uh, the h should go to e. Uh, H equals H time. You need, oh, okay, wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. So I need uh, parentheses here. Let's hold on. Maybe I better, like. Hold on, let me, let me collect things that I'm missing. So one, missing parentheses. Bias. I'm writing these, oh, hopefully where you couldn't see them, but you can. Yes, that should be a Hadamard product in there, but where? So this is the thing, right? Isn't it, this needs to, these are the Hadamard products, right? I just want to understand this correctly. Like, well, take the learning rate out of this. This is a single vector. This is a single vector. So those are the Hadamard products. And then this is like the transposed outputs. This, this has to be transposed. That way I can get a matrix to change all the weights, right? I think that's right, right? Matrix multiplication is wrong. The H should go to E. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry, uh, Austin, I'm locked too. Locked, lost, oh, I can't even speak. Before E. All right, let's, can, we, can we not talk about the derivative of ReLU? Because that's not, that's not relevant to this video right now. Don't you have a book? I do have a book. <clears throat> let's look at the formulas in the book. Let's look at the um, notation. H should go before E. Where? H should go before E. I have no idea where you're talking about. Um, uh, oops, this camera went off. All right, so let's look here. Let me look at the formula in this book. Learning rate times E sub K, which in my Notation is J times sigmoid, which is of the output, which is this, times 1 minus sigmoid of the output, which is this, times the output transposed. The output is the learning rate. The sigmoid is the squashing activation function we saw before. The times is multiplication is the normal element by element. So that's the, that's what I was trying to, this is like, I was trying to use an asterisk for um, element wise multiplication. And then I was, I guess I can use the dot for like the matrix multiplication. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. This is slightly different, though, than what I, than what's written here. <laughs> How about random numbers? Output gradients equals output errors times output derivatives. Hidden errors equals output weights transpose product and delta h before e except after c. Output error, output gradients equals output errors times output derivatives. Hidden errors, so I've got the output gradients equals the errors times the derivatives, right. Yes, that's a nice way of thinking about it. The errors times the derivatives, the hidden errors times the derivatives. Final outputs minus final output errors times final outputs times one minus final outputs, yep. Dot product with transpose the hidden outputs. Yeah. This is right. This is exactly the same. Um, and then here. I like how I like to just said, I like how somebody said output gradients equals output errors times output derivatives. So the gradient is the error times the derivative. This is the error, this is the derivative. Of the, and then we have to adjust it in the same way we do here with the inputs and the learning rate. So the gradient here is just the error, is just the error. Is that right? Maybe I should come back to, I think I want to slowly go back to where I didn't have anything here yet. Can you, is this a way of thinking of the gradient, right? And the gradient here is the errors times the, out, the output errors times the output derivative. Then delta is multiplied by the learning rate multiplied by the input. Delta is multiplied by the learning rate multiplied by the inputs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. But is it right to say, what I would like to know, is it right to say that the gradient here is just the error? Whereas here, because the derivative of the, is this is just a linear function. The slope is continuous. Not continuous, but it is the same always. <laughs> and here, the derivative, the gradient is the error times the derivative of the output. Column vector A multiplied by row vector V gives matrix with A rows by B columns. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. H and I need to be transposed. Yeah, these definitely need to be transposed. All right, so let me, let me go back and try this again. <laughs> I hope you're saying, I want you to be my teacher. I hope you're talking to Alka or somebody else and not me. There's no, at this point. All right. Mathieu. Please, I hope we can make something of this because I don't know if I can bear to try this again. But I'm going to um, go back to where I didn't have anything here yet. And these, whoops, were kind of a bit of a more of a mess. And I didn't talk about the transposing, and okay. Okay. Yeah, and the error back propagation. Yes. Okay. The book make your yeah. Really, should really just read the book. Make your own neural network. All right. Okay. Okay. Let's let, let me try this again. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, this wouldn't have been here. And this also wasn't clearly 
This wasn't clear what this was. Okay. So what goes here? This is the question. Now this is where we're so happy to have this book, <laughs> Make Your Own Neural Network, because we can just look up the formula in here. But what actually is going to go here is the derivative of the output. Now let's think about this. Why, why am I coming up with derivative? You might have remembered back from the mathematics of gradient descent that uh, we had to take the de derivative. But in this case of y, in this case it's mx plus b, it's a very simple derivative. It's a linear function. Here we have this sigmoid thing. We need to calculate the gradient. And the gradient is the, errors the error of the output times the derivative of the output. What hap well, how does the output change um, how does the output change relative to the errors? So in this case, right, we need to add in here the derivative of sigmoid. Now here's the wonderful thing. Sigmoid is the function, right, the derivative of sigmoid, s prime x, is simply equal to the sigmoid of x uh, times 1 minus, can you see what I'm writing? Yes, sigmoid of x. So in this case, we need to calculate this gradient the derivative of sigmoid. And right here, now one thing I should really clarify here is, um, so learning rate is a scalar number. Error is a vector. Learning rate is a scalar number. I'm going to put an asterisk here. Error, a hidden error is a vector. So I need to multiply and uh, the output is a vector. So these are actually, this is element-wise multiplication of the out, no, I've already, the, what's coming out of here, out of output, has already had the sigmoid pass through it. So I just need to say the output plus 1 minus the output. The output plus 1 minus the output. Now what's weird about this is now the h is really this, right? We have the exact same formula. I have the, the learning rate, the error, uh, the gradient here. You can sort of consider this. The gradient here is just the error. The gradient here is the error times the derivative of the output. And then if I'm multiplying, I need to get a weight matrix. So the input, by the way, is also a vector, but I need to get a matrix. So the interesting thing that happens, if I use the matrix product here and transpose this vector, right? This is element-wise multiplication. This is just a scalar. Now, here's the thing. If I have the, sorry, if I have this error and time, the gradient, essentially, as called gradient, as a um, single column vector, four columns, if I multiply that by a, the hidden output, which is also a single column vector, but transposed, what am I going to get? I'm actually going to get a four by four matrix. Pause for a second and think about that. Is that right? Uh, because I take the row and do the dot product. I take the row and do the dot product. Take the row and do the dot product. Take the row and do the dot product. I see like lots of, um, whoops. Um, did I write this in the wrong order? When I'm, do when I'm doing matrix multiplication, I need to have the same number of rows as columns, right? So the fir this should have rows, four rows. This is one column. This is one row. This is four rows four columns. It's right, yeah. Yeah. So I already did, by the way, in case people are wondering, I already did the whole error calculation stuff in the previous two videos like a few weeks ago. So I'm just trying to do the deltas here. Um, and so I just want to make sure. So what is this? Let me just, as, let me just take a minute to, uh, I just like don't have space on the whiteboard and it's only when I can't write. I guess I can write over here for a second, right? So what am I going to get? Here, 
first thing I'm going to do is do um, G1, H1, right? And then here is going to be, oh god, it's funny how I can't do this matrix math all of a sudden. <laughs> first of all, I can't do it because I'm afraid and people are watching me. Let me, let's, let's, let's go to here. Uh, matrix multiplication.xyz. So, can I make my own matrix? Oh yeah, there we go. Right? Let's look at this. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So helpful. Reset. Okay. Okay. If you take a single column matrix and multiply it by a single row matrix, as long as it has, this has the same number of columns as this has rows, let's, let's look at what happens, right? There's a wonderful website that I use often when I get stuck. It's called um, matrixmultiplication.xyz. And here what I can do is I can make, I'm going to make this exact, right? Here's an arbitrary single column uh, vector. And then I'm going to make a single row uh, vector. So a, a one column matrix, a one row matrix, I'm going to hit multiply. So this is, I'm just going to go to the end here. We can, this is a nice little animation that goes through everything that I did in previous matrix multiplications. And you can see we end up with a four by four matrix. So this is exactly what we need to do to be able to get the, um, the deltas for all the weights. Okay, so, uh, this also has to be, if I'm going here, this has to be transposed, and this should be element-wise multiplication with the, the um, uh, ooh, I, I lost track here. So I'm taking the output error and multiply by the derivative of the output. Here I'm taking the hidden error and multiplying it by the derivative of the hidden. So that would be h plus h plus one, uh, so not plus, ooh, what I have plus here, I've had that wrong for so long, times, that's another element-wise multiplication, times one, and this is a one, not an i, one minus h. Okay, I think we've done it. I'm gonna just check here my trusty guide that I highly recommend that you read instead of listen, read instead of listening to me, and I'm gonna look at this. The change in weight matrix equals learning rate times the error times Sigmoid of the output. Well, my, I, I have sigmoid kind of built in here. I'm assuming the output of the sigmoid has already been done. Times one minus sigmoid of the output. I'm assuming sigmoid has already been done. With the dot product of the matrix multiplication of the hidden, ooh, the output transpose. Well, th this is right. My notation is slightly different. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so I think we're just about ready. Now, of course, I forgot about the bias. So I'm going to have to basically do exactly the same thing with the bias. The bias is always simpler because I can just get rid of this. So I'm assuming I could probably sort of do the same thing here. <laughs> so, uh, but I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Let me at least try to implement this in the code and then uh, and I'll do that in the next video and then we'll come back to the bias. Okay. Um, I, did I say that wrong? I probably said that wrong. I need to have the same number of rows as columns, right? So confusing. Uh, it's confusing because I, um, anyway. Right, because if I take this out, oh no, that works. Same number of columns as rows. So these can, oops, whoops, ah, did I said that wrong, right? Um, like in my, in my matrix library, when I do multiply, A's columns have to equal B's rows. Oh yeah, I said that wrong, shoot, I said that wrong. This is all that one column has to equal one row. The number of rows and the number of columns can be other things. Because you're only going to have a four by four. Shoot. 
darn. <laughs> I feel like I finally kind of got all this in some way that made sense. But I kind of messed up that. We'll see if how terrible that is. Um, okay. All right. Let's just, let's move on and let me try to implement the code. Okay, uh, depressed shift min is here, trying to move on and start to implement this code. So what, what I need to do is, okay, so what I've done successfully, somewhat successfully in the code so far, is compute the errors, the output errors, and the hidden errors. And I've added, I have a transpose function, I have a matrix mul a multiply function. So what I need to do is compute the deltas, the gradients. I need to figure out how, what I need to do to change all these weights. I should say that I did say something I think wrong in the previous video. So I might as well at least say it here, which is that in, with matrix multiplication, and this shouldn't be an asterisk here, I don't know, you know, this, you can think of the dot product or just an X for matrix multiplication. I need to have the A, this is matrix A and this is matrix B, A, the number of columns in A has to be the same as the number of rows in B. So this could have, as long as it has one column, this could have three rows and this could have uh, eight columns, but this is one dimensional this way, one dimensional this way, and that's going to that's going to always give us in the end the correct dimensions for the weight matrix. So I kind of misstated that in the previous video. <laughs> I don't know if, if you were worried about that. I don't know if correcting it by now. Hopefully that's enough. So let's try to uh, put this stuff in here. Now one thing that I think I really need to do, unfortunately, is that I had this lovely idea previously of like, oh, what I need to do first to get the error right, is I need to feed the inputs in, get the output, and compare it to the target, right? That's going to give me the errors. And then I can compute the hidden error by doing the weighted percentage stuff that I did previously. The issue is, once I start wanting to do all this stuff, it would be nice if I could remember all the parts that happened during the feed forward process. So as much as I just wanted to call feed forward here, I think it's actually going to work better if I run the feed forward stuff here. So I'm going to actually grab all of this, copy it, and I'm going to paste it right here. So there's definitely some redundancy in the code, but this is going to help me figure it out. So uh, I need to feed everything forward. Inputs, hidden, which then gets the bias, passes through sigmoid. So it's hidden, this hidden matrix is left in the state of the values coming out of here. Good. Then I have the output, the adding the bias, and the output is left in the state of it coming out. Now, uh, in the state of it coming out of here. Now, previously, <coughs> I had taken the outputs from the, from the feed forward function. I don't want to do that anymore. In fact, I guess if I'm being consistent, I should call these outputs. So now I have the outputs, plus I have like all the other stuff that happened before in case I need to reuse it. Um, and I have the targets, and I can have the output errors. So now I need the gradients. So what do I need for the gradient? I'm going to call this let gradient equal uh, outputs. Um, okay, so how am I going to do this? How do I do them? It's like, oh, I don't have NumPy. This is where you really need NumPy, which is a Python library for doing matrix calculations. So let me think about this. I need to um, I need to take those outputs which have already been passed through sigmoid and multiply it. I mean, this is what I need to do, but this won't work, right? I need to calculate this gradient as those outputs, the derivative, outputs times one minus outputs. So I have to do this with my matrix library. So one thing I just realizing here is I don't actually have element-wise multiplication. The multiply function multiplies two matrices with matrix multiplication. The multiply function, oh, I do, I do, no, 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 I do, I do it. The multiply function. So the static multiply, woo, only multiplies, is this good though? The non-static can take a scalar or another matrix, and this, by the way, this oh, right here, this is, referred to as the Hadamard think product, which is element-wise. Oh boy. So I do actually oddly have this here. Is this going to be useful? So let's see. Um, 
Whoa, where am I again? I need, I, I'm, I want to go back to train. So what I need to do, the uh, first I need to do is map the outputs. Oh no. Yeah, I'm going to need, I'm going to need a, um, a static version of that. I don't, I don't like what I've done here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my matrix library and I'm going to have this function only be for the scalar product. Then I'm going to make a, a static function called Hadamard, which is for element-wise. And that can be <coughs> essentially this right here. So I am going to, I should have had this before I got into this video, but I don't, so I'm going to just do it in this video. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, a dot rows, a dot columns, uh, b, <coughs> um, so uh, a, and I need to say, uh, I need to make a uh, result is a new matrix, a dot, uh, a dot rows, b dot columns. <coughs> And the result, each element of the result in its row column position is the, the, the element-wise multiplication. And I should probably add a check here to make sure the number of rows and columns are the same, but that can happen another time. I'm going to say return result. Now remember I have this map function. Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm so silly. There's an easy way for me to do this. Oh, well, we're going to leave that there, though. I, mean, I still might want There's an easy way for me to do this, which is that, um, right, remember I have this, like, sigmoid function? Where did I put the sigmoid function? Is it, is it just in here? Sigmoid. I am going to write a function called d sigmoid. Now, here's the thing. This isn't really the derivative of sigmoid, because that would involve calculating sigmoid. But since I've already done sigmoid, maybe I, should, I don't know what to call this exactly, but I'll put y in here to be more clear. So I'm going to say y times 1 minus y. So what, what's a good word? I don't know what a good um, function to call this is, but I'm just going to call a uh, name to call it. I'm going to call it d sigmoid. Because sigmoid, this output array is already, this is what I need to do. I, I can just say, yeah, I don't need to save it for any reason. I can just say outputs map d sigmoid. This, what this is doing is it's saying out, this is outputs equals outputs times one minus outputs. All right, so that is this piece right here. Now I need to element-wise multiply it by the errors. Ah, that's why I should have left it the way it was. I regret all the changes I recently made. Right, because I don't need to save it. Once I'm done with that, it doesn't get used anywhere else. Right? Am I right about that? I think I'm right about that. So, let me go back. Let me undo a bunch of these things. I'm going to go back. And now... Okay. Anybody have a better idea of what would sort of more appropriately, oh my goodness, uh, call this function here? Um, there, is, there are a lot of NumPy-like libraries for JavaScript. I'm just trying not to use one. Uh, I, I'm going to replace what I'm doing eventually with one. So let me get to the point where here I am. I'm going to go back to where I said. Okay, I'm in train. Okay, I'm going to go back to where I was here. Sigmoid prime. Maybe. Um, Optimus sigmoid. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go back to where I was here. Okay. So I need to somehow get this gradient, which is 
this piece right here. The nice thing is I can actually use functionality that I have built into the matrix library. So for example, I have that map function. So I can take every element of output and set it equal to output it, that element times one minus itself. So what I need is another function, right? Much like I have sigmoid, what I need is the derivative of sigmoid. Now this, there's a little bit something strange that's gonna go on here. Let me just write this. If I write a function called d sigmoid, what I really mean is return sigmoid of x times one minus sigmoid of x. This, technically speaking, is the derivative of sigmoid. <laughs> but that's actually not what I want to do here, because if, you've, if you're following along, and where am I here, in train, I've already mapped the output through sigmoid. So actually what I want is, and I, I kind of like, I would, like, I would just want to call it like fake d c sigmoid, but I'm just going to put y in here. I'm going to comment this out, and kind of as if y is, I'm just changing the variable name, y has already been sigmoided, um, and I'm going to say return y times 1 minus y. So what I can do now to, for, uh, to calculate this gradients is I can basically say outputs, I kind of want to call it gradient, but right, outputs dot map, um, and maybe I should make a copy of it or something, d sigmoid. Right, so now I've taken outputs and I've set each element equal to this. Now I need to element-wise multiply that by the error. So I need to say outputs. Now here's the thing. In my matrix library, this is like, I have this right here. The multiply function currently, if it gets a matrix, it does what's, what I refer to element-wise multiplication, which I'm referring to as the Hadamard product. Um, so otherwise, so I guess what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this. Um, and I'm going to say outputs.multiply. Uh, now remember when I use matrix.multiply, that's the that's the multiply, that's matrix multiplication. This is Hadamard. Mm. I should write a separate function called Hadamard. Um, yeah, let's take this out and make this Hadamard. Uh, all right, let's just leave it. I'll, I'll refactor that later. Ah, what do I do? What do I do? <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it. It's fine. Multiply by output errors. There we go. So now I've done this piece and this piece. Now I need to multiply by the learning rate. Do I even have... Uh, I, oh, I've been waiting my whole life just to get to the point where I can put the learning rate in the code because I feel like once you have the learning rate in the code, I'm kind of done. So let's make that a variable. This dot learning rate. I don't know. I'm just going to set equal to like 0.1 right now. And so now I also need to say outputs dot multiply by learning rate. And now what I need to do, I have all of these. These And now what I need to do, I've done this whole piece here. All I need to do is take what came out of hidden, transpose it, and do the matrix, the, the matrix product, matrix multiplication between that matrix and this matrix. And then I have all the delta weights, and I can just adjust them. I, you know, I've got to talk about stochastic, et cetera, but let, let's just, let me, let me just, let me try to get through what I'm doing here. All right, I now. I'm going to say, uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this particular array, right? This particular vector. I need to get let hidden t, which is hidden transpose, is matrix dot transpose hidden, and then let deltas weight weight. What am I calling these? Um, like the this dot weights i h. So I'm going to say weights. H O deltas equals matrix dot multiply 
So this is, I'm going to put a comment in here, calculate gradient, um, and then calculate deltas, calculate deltas, matrix dot multiply. What do I want to multiply? I've got to do this in the right order. <laughs> I want the column vector, which is the, the gradients thing that I've been doing, and the row vector, which is the output to hit it. Okay. So I'm going to say multiply outputs. So I, I hate that I've done this. Does the map function, what I want to have is a, I, you know what I want is I want a static version of the map function that will pull out, make it new. So let me do that really quickly. So where's the map function? Um, map. I made a static, <laughs> I made a static version already. How exciting. Oh, life is good sometimes. <laughs> oh, that's so lucky. So I want to do this. Let gradients equals matrix dot map. This solves all my problems. Outputs D sigmoid. No, I don't need, all right. So I want to map all the outputs with sigmo the derivative of sigmoid, then multiply by output errors, multiply by the learning rate, transpose the hidden output, and then mul matrix multiply the gradients by the hidden output transposed. And now, weight h, oh, this, this dot weight h o dot add uh, weight h o deltas. So this is me just like taking, going into, just going nuts and saying I calculated those deltas, change all the weights by those deltas. So I'm, I don't know, this is, is this right? Let's, let's, we'll think about this more later. Oh, I need the bias. Well, that's fine. I'm going to do the bias. All right, so that's good. Now I have to deal with the hidden layer. This should be much easier now that I've done this once. Okay? Um, I need to calculate the hidden gradient, which is matrix.map, the hidden, what came out of hidden, um, uh, passed through D, D sigmoid. Then I need to take the hidden gradient. And what did I do up here? I multiplied it by the output errors, but have I calculated the hidden errors? I have calculated the hidden errors somewhere. I did back propagation. Hidden errors, right there. Oh, how lucky, lucky me. <laughs> hidden gradient, multiply by hidden errors. Then hidden gradient, multiply by learning rate. And that's this dot learning rate. And did I forget that up here? Yeah, this, this dot learning rate, right? Um, and then, so this is calculate hidden gradient. Now, oh my god, <laughs> calculate uh, hidden deltas, or you know, the, uh, it's input to hidden, input to hidden, I'll just input to hidden deltas. Okay, so that is, just like I did up here, the first thing I need to do is transpose input, inputs T equals inputs dot transpose. Oh no, matrix dot transpose inputs. Matrix dot transpose inputs. Okay, and then what did I call those deltas? I call these weight hidden output deltas. So let weight input hidden deltas equal matrix dot multiply the inputs. No, no, not the inputs, <clears throat> the gradients times the transposed inputs. The hidden gradient times the, uh, uh, what do I call that? Inputs T, transposed inputs, and then, <laughs> I can just adjust those. My goodness. I've just let, I'm, spe I, I, I'm speechless. I'm without speech. <laughs> okay. I think I might be done with this. Um, except for the bias. 
<laughs> I'm going to save that for, I'm going to add the bias in a separate video because I feel like I just need a break. So let's think about this. I might have made some mistakes, but I think that I've gotten through this. I think what I've done is I have figured out a way to use the train function to calculate the errors, use backpropagation to chop up and divide the error and assign blame all over the place. <laughs> right? I know the output errors. I need to figure out the hidden layers errors. Then, that's what I've got here. Those were the first two videos. In this, the third video, I kind of talked through these formulas. And now in this video, I have used the math function to calculate the gradient, the errors, times the derivative of the output. I, adding the learning rate in, I'm multiplying it by what's coming in transposed to get the weight deltas. I've done that for both this layer, this matrix, and this matrix. Again, at some point I really need to extrap, if I'm really gonna continue with this library to make it something useful, I need to be able to have multiple hidden layers and this backpropagation would happen in a loop, but I'm doing this two separate distinct chunks just to understand them. And then I'm gonna adjust all the weights. So there's things that I haven't talked about yet. Number one is I've got to adjust the bias values. And number two is when and where should I be doing this? Should I run through all of my training data and get like the kind of average error of everything and then adjust all the weights? Or should I each time adjust the weights for each record? Or should I do batches? Like send in these 10 data points, adjust. Send in these 10, adjust. And that has to do with stochastic gradient descent versus a batch gradient descent. So I'm going to get there. Let me take a break, take a few deep breaths, and make a separate video where I adjust the biases. I might have made some, something absolutely completely wrong. So if you want, you're going to have to watch all the way through to find out if I have other things that I have to correct later, which I may. But um, I'm going to change the biases, and then I'm finally going to do, I'm just going to try to train it on the XOR to see if I've done this correctly. XOR would be a really simple problem, so it's a good test problem for me to see if my code is mostly working correctly. <sighs> oh, stop. I have made, but before I go, there is one error that I can point out here. This is input to hidden. Thank you. Okay, see you in the next video. <laughs> what time is it? 5.40. Huh. All right, so, the bias. So here's the thing. Uh, the, the, the Make Your Own Neural Network book doesn't include the bias. And the other, the ML for A tutorial that I read today, um, <laughs> but I'll, get, I'll get this, you know what, I'm gonna leave that and I'll put it in the next video. You don't have to add that into the end of this video. Um, the other, the other, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't change the camera. The ML for A tutorial I read just sort of says like, oh, it's easier to do this if you just make the bias as another weight and have it always be one, um, which I've talked about in previous videos, but wouldn't I, if, if I'm using the same logic where I'm extrapolating from here to these two, if I extrapolate from here to these two, don't I just, isn't it just this without these two things? Is that all I need to adjust the bias? Somebody tell me, like, because certainly I don't need a matrix. The bias is a single column vector. So can't I just take exactly this without, without the matrix product of the transposed inputs and that's the deltas for the bias? Somebody tell me if that's right. That's my intuition. Yeah, I didn't run the code. <laughs> I didn't run the code. The worst. I'll do that at the beginning of the next video. Kay Weekman says yes, and I'm just going to assume that you're saying yes to the question I asked. There's a yes there. 5.43 p.m. one minute ago. Must be yes. Okay, great. So that's going to make my life easy because I can do that. In fact, um, I already have that in here. Right? In theory, that's this. Right? I don't even need to, I can just adjust the biases by the gradient, by the gradient because it's multiplied by the, like, if this whole thing is the, um, if this whole thing is the gradient, that's the deltas for the biases, right? 
<laughs> Can you please type another yes? <laughs> um, all right, so the things I need to fix are I didn't actually, I have to fix this, and then I have to uh, run the code to see what other syntax errors I have. So all I need is one more yes, <laughs> and I can move on. Oh my goodness. No, I'm waiting for K Weekman's yes. K Weekman is not typing. Usually I see it like K Weekman is typing. <laughs> By the way, sometimes I'm speaking in, I watch myself a lot at 2x. I don't watch myself a lot at 2x, but if I have to go back and watch something, I'll watch it at 2x. So I always feel like I'm, like my actual native personality is to talk like this and go to the 2x really fast. No. Yeah, he said yes to my previous question. <laughs> but I, I guess I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna just go with it. I, I feel confident, thank you. All right. <sighs> that is correct, move on, all right. <laughs> okay, I'm, here I am, back again. Oh, I'm so close to the end of this. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of mistakes that I made. So I, I made a really, an error here, which is I didn't even try to run my code, and uh, there was a big there's a big typo here already, which is that this should be the is this and this might actually even be weights. Like I think I might not be like being careful about my right these these that's weights plural, so that's totally wrong. Weights plural, and this is not this is input to hidden, and this is also input to hidden deltas. So that I should have said. And I wonder if I made that mistake here, like this dot weights, that should be weights. I got this right. So let's try, let's try running the code. I, you know, I have no idea. You could, put, you could put odds on whether there's any errors. I would put very, I, I give myself like 50 to one that there's no errors. Um, so let's go and just, because if you recall, I have in the sketch, like I'm setting myself up for a very simple scenario of two inputs, uh, uh, two inputs, two hidden nodes, and two outputs. Um, line 99 typo. So I guess I should check. There might even be a typo in line 99. Oh, that's a comment, so I don't know what that is. Uh, all right, all right, let's just, let's just hit refresh here. Identifier inputs has already been declared. Neural network.js line 59. So let's see what that is. Oh, I forgot. So I don't, oh yeah. Oh, this, interesting. So um, this should probably be called input array, like I did with feed forward. And in that sense, this should probably be target array, because, and then, targets equals matrix from array target array. So let's just do that. So that's important because I'm letting the end user pass in the inputs and targets as simple arrays, and internally in the library, I'm converting those to matrix objects. Targets is not defined, neural network line 71. Oh, and the, so this has to be let targets because it's a new variable here. <laughs> There's no errors. <laughs> okay, weird. All right, so let's move on. Now, this is really tricky. I probably could have been much more thoughtful about how I'm doing this, um, uh, but here's the thing. I now need to add the, del the, the deltas for the biases. Now, if you've been following along, here's how I've Here's how I've connected all this stuff. I made a video a long while back, oh, in yesteryears of days, when it was just a one-dimensional y equals mx plus b. I made a video about gradient descent, where delta m is the learning rate times error times x, and delta b is just the learning rate times error. Well, this is the analogous situation with matrices. Learning rate times error, this gradient, so to speak, is this whole thing over here. And the x is this thing over here. And the same thing here. This is the delta, the delta, I mean, sorry, the gradient, which is this, times the inputs, which is x. So the, the deltas for the biases is actually not a matrix, right? The biases is a one column vector, basically, one, ma one column matrix, which is a vector. And so the delta biases is actually just this part. This part and this part. And guess what? I have already calculated those things. So if you look at that here, oops, if I go back to my code, right, this is before, 
uh, where, where is it? Um, right here, where am I? Ah, gradients, right? Right here, I am ca I'm passing the outputs through the derivative. I am multiplying element-wise with the errors and the learning rate. This, and then I have to do the transpose and get, but this is it. These gradients, I could just say uh, biases, this dot bias, and where am I? Output dot add gradients. So uh, let me actually, well, let me actually put this, <laughs> where did I go? Let me put this here. So this is adjust the weights by deltas, and now adjust the bias by its deltas, which is just the gradients. Uh, okay, and then I should be able to do exactly the same thing with down here. Uh, oops, this will come after. And what I want to do is adjust the hidden bias with the hidden gradient. Now, I've, I'm, one thing that's probably inconsistent, maybe I'm just going to kind of leave it, but if anybody, as, as um, you, uh, I, this is a, I'm going to put all this code in a repo, uh, which is already there, it's just called like toy neural network. Um, and so one thing that probably should be consistent is when I'm saying like weights versus weight or gradient versus gradients. So that can be cleaned up later. Let's just see, by goodness, if I have any errors. Um, okay, no errors. Sorry, let's check the chat. Oh. Okay. Let me just see if I have any errors. No errors. All right. Dare I do something next? Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I mentioned before, now, how you collect and prepare your data is so important in terms of the ethics of what you're doing, the scientific accuracy of what you're doing, and I'm, I'm kind of glossing all over that just to make this toy neural network library. But beyond just sort of like being thoughtful about collecting your data, we've got to figure out like, how do I even like do this? And so there are a variety of techniques in terms of calculating the error over time and batches and then adjusting the weights versus, but I think what I'm going to do is called stochastic gradient descent. Let's Google that. <laughs> that. Let's just make sure I've got the right term. Stochastic gradient descent is uh, known as incremental, dis is a, uh, iterative method for minimizing an object that's written as a sum, blah, 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 blah. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm correct in that what I'm doing is, in other words, what I'm going to do with stochastic gradient descent, which I think is what I did with my perceptron example and my linear regression example, is that for every single record, every single data point, I'm going to pass it in, calculate the error, back propagate, gradients, adjust one at a time, instead of doing batches that you, but, but be aware of this idea of batches because that's a core concept as you start to use other people's like real, actual, robust working, deep learning libraries and examples and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna do this stochastic idea, which the, one of the reasons why I wanna do that, I don't know why I switched over there, one of the reasons why I wanna do this stochastic idea is it's basically already what I've done. So this train function simply takes a single set of inputs and a single set of outputs targets, does all that it needs to do to it, adjusts everything, and finishes off. So, um, so let's do that. Let's do that. I don't need, um, let's, let's try. Oh my goodness. Ah! So let's, let's prepare a data set. I'm going to do this. Oh, okay, so I like, I'm like terrified to erase this. I guess I have to. Let me take a moment and erase this. Do my. Okay, so this is my data set. I'm gonna have, uh, this, so this, is the, this is the architecture I'm gonna use. 
I'm going to have two inputs, a hidden layer with two neurons, and an output layer with one. And I, let, me, let me try that again. I don't need to write so high on the board. My elbow barely even goes straight. <laughs> um, OK, so here's the architecture I'm going to use. I'm going to have an input, input layer. I'm just going to say layer. Two inputs. I'm going to have a hidden layer with two, uh, two, two nodes. Then I'm going to have an output with just one. This is a nice architecture for trying to solve the XOR problem, exclusive OR. I just want the simplest thing just to kind of, I need some way of kind of debugging and validating that something in my code is doing it correctly. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, um, so this, it's going to look like this. And so for my data set with, uh, is going to be this, following. Um, one comma zero gives me a one. Zero comma one gives me a one. One comma one gives me a zero. And zero comma zero gives me a zero. So this is the classic non-linearly separable problem that I discussed with the perceptron. A single perceptron can't do it. This is now a multi-layered perceptron with gradient descent and backpropagation in my code. So I should be able to continuously feed it this training data set. Now I said you need a training data set and a test data set, but this is like such a simplistic problem. There's only four possibilities. It'll be interesting to look at you know, visualizing it and letting these be continuous floating point values, but let's, let, let me just do what I'm doing. So I'm gonna put into my code the training data. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm going to say uh, let training data equal, I'm going to have it be an array, and each element of the array is going to be an object. Inputs, 0, 0, targets, 1. So I'm kind of, I could put this in a JSON file or a spreadsheet, but I'm going to just do it like this hard coded in just to make the point, right? And so now I have. Uh, oh, no, no, okay, so uh, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 0 is, uh, 1, 1 is 0. Okay, so, oh dear. Oh, this should be a colon. Ah, silly syntax error that I then copy-pasted everywhere. Okay, so this is now my training data. It is an array with objects. So now what I need to do is I am going to say, 2, 2, 1, that's my neural network. And I'm going to say, let's see, what do I need to do? <laughs> For uh, data of training data, that's a nice little loop through everything that's in here. I'm going to say neural network train data inputs, data targets. And I probably, I'm just going to, you know, I could pick it randomly. I'm going to go through the data and I'm going to do it like, I'm going to do it like 100 times in the same order, which is probably a problem. I should probably randomize the order. <laughs> let's just do it this way and see what's going on. So let's do that. And then I'm going to test things by saying uh, guess equals neural network feed forward. Uh, zero, zero. Um, and actually, you know what I'm just going to do? I'm going to say neural network feed forward zero, zero, print. So this should uh, give me everything in the console that I want. So this is, I haven't been too, uh, am I being careful enough? This is the inputs with the target. 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 I'm just going to train it with that like 100 times in the exact same order, which is probably a terrible idea with stochastic gradient descent. And then I'm just going to call feed forward. And I think I still have in my matrix library this print function, which just like console.tables the stuff out. All right. I don't know. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? 
Feed forward, print is not a function. All right. Neural network. Oh, you know what? It gives me a nice little array. I forgot. I don't need to do this. I could just console. I forgot that it, the library itself gives me a nice little array. So let's just console log. I don't need that print thing. So let's try this. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't look very good, right? I should be getting 1100, zero, zero, like we're close to it. Let's train it like, uh, so let's try training it like 10,000 times. Hey, this is maybe interestingly sort of better. Um, one zero zero one 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 zero zero. So I'm definitely feeding in the, all the proper inputs. Is my training data correct? Zero one gives one. One zero gives one. Zero zero gives zero. One one gives one. So I think I really need to randomize the order, right? I've really got to randomize the order. So let's randomize the order. And in fact, what I'm going to do, forget about even randomizing the order, I'm just going to always pick a random one. So I'm just going to say, let data, and P5 has a nice function. If I just give it random uh, training data, it's going to give me a random one. Oh, the learning rate is something I actually should really be careful about. I just put in 0.1. So that's probably something I need to be more thoughtful about. So let me, um, uh, so let me do it 50,000 times. And let's see what happens in a random order. Oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. So interestingly enough, so I want to do this um, as a coding challenge. Um, I want to actually write an example that sort of like animates and visualizes it as it's learning. I'm saying I have, <laughs> I can't believe this worked. Oh my god. I can't believe I arrived here. I mean, I'm sure there's like problems, and it's, uh, but at least it worked for this simple problem. Um, and, but, um, so, somebody said I had a typo uh, in the train function. Well, <laughs> I'm sure I do. Don't, I'm so happy right now. So, I need to do coding challenge, which is actually the XOR problem and also animate it as I'm going. So I think I'd essentially do the same thing, but draw sort of like a pixel space and actually iterate over it. And I should see, it, um, you know, the corners would be the, the full Boolean value. I'll explain this when I do the coding challenge. I can't even think anymore. I just got this to work. Uh, <laughs> This is not deeplearn.js. I'm about like five. Um, I think I'm uh, uh, <clears throat> back propagation x or. I am. Uh, I think it was like 86 was the back propagation paper. Um, history, 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 history. Uh, uh, 86. So I'm 86, 96, 2006, uh, I'm like 32 years behind <laughs> deeplearn.js. Hopefully I can catch up a little faster. You know, I did, a, I did a, whole, a lot of years of research. I mean, I didn't do the research. I implemented what much smarter people came up with for many years in a short period of time here. I'm seeing lots of nice uh, emojis in the chat. It's great. Um, so it's 6 o'clock. Let's commit. Let's push this to GitHub. Get, oh, and you know what? Let's get rid of, oh, oh, that's deleted. Git add, uh, code is in state after last tutorial video, after last backprop video. And I am going to, hmm, that's interesting. It actually thinks that I renamed this file to that, even though what I really did was delete it. But anyway, uh, git push origin. Watch this. Watch this. No, 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 no. It's not going to let me do that. Uh, git push origin master uh, backprop. So I, I, uh, earlier today, if you weren't around, I did a, um, I set the repo up with te unit testing and continuous integration. So you cannot push anything to master. Um, you can only push to other branches, and my unit tests will run. I mean, there's basically no unit tests in there yet, but I will 
uh, add more. No, 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 this is the old repo that I'm going to delete now. Uh, neural network, where am I? Coding train, uh, toy, yeah, no. toy, toy neural network. Uh, compare and pull request, uh, create pull request. Let's, oh, it's out of date with the base branch. How is that even possible? Update branch. Uh, it's running my tests. Okay. Ah. So we're going to merge. Then I'm not sure what happened. I'm just going to say git pull. I'm afraid to do this, master. Oh, it's just the readme and the test. That's all. OK. So the readme and the test had some changes. That was, that was all. Um, OK. Uh, yeah, so if the GitHub stuff is uh, confusing to you, you can watch my whole series on GitHub and the new series which will come out next week about unit testing and continuous integration. OK. Um, the files from this morning didn't upload, so I have to remember to do that. Okay. Um, always the README. Okay. Yeah, coding challenge. So I think, I think this should be famous last words. A nice, I th as much as it's sort of time for me to go, it's six o'clock. Um, it's not horrifically late like it's been. And I don't feel I have the energy or time to do MNIST as a coding challenge with this library. Uh, anything that can involve a lot of interesting stuff with drawing it. So I'll get to that next week. Um, but I do think I could do the XOR challenge. Um, uh, <laughs> um, so let me try that. I don't, I don't think, and this would be great, but I, I feel like I've, I'm on like hour five or six of streaming today. And I think, you know, generally, uh, you know, the smart thing to do would be to stop now. <laughs> but if I'm not going to stop now, let me just, uh, put the XOR thing together. Um, and that also, I think before I do MNIST, it would be worth letting the library go through a bunch of like improvements over the next week. Maybe people will contribute to it and more tests, because that would be nice. Um, so that's, that's kind of what I think. So, um, and also, so let me refactor the repository a little bit also. So, um, So what I want to do, hmm, let's think about this. I want to make a folder called lib, and I want to put the neural network stuff in there. Then I want to make a folder called um, xor. I'll make I'll call it examples, and I'll make a folder in there called xor. Uh, I will upload this as its own coding challenge, but I might as well do it in this repo right now. Uh, and so sketch and index.html go in there, which go in here. And then what I'll need to do is um, make sure, a couple things. One is um, the uh, example code will need to reference lib. I think, I think this is right. So oh, why is it asking me to do this? So let's see, does that fix it? Uh, let's see. Whoops. So examples, xor. Uh, lib, what did I do wrong? Dot, dot, lib. Dot, 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 lib? No. No, I just have to go up one directory and then lib. Right? Oh, no, two directories. So I could be more thoughtful about how I do this, but let's just do that. There we go. So this works. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start with. 
And um, so let me, let's, uh, let's run the tests. Oh, I mean NPM test. So that still is fine. Um, yeah, all the normalizing of data and all of that, I'm going to have to uh, do at some point. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> it'll, the the iTerm joke will never be overplayed. <laughs> I'll be sad when I finally do iTerm, because then it won't be a joke anymore. So let me, uh, um, let me say, um, uh, refactoring directories and um, I'll merge it all in later. Um, okay. So now, so if you can tolerate this, excuse me, I am going to. <laughs> Well, I've been live streaming for almost six hours today. <laughs> Definitely do not. Um, <laughs> um, I think I'm going to start, I'm going to delete all this. Because the idea here is that this is now, my idea for this was this, this video could be a video that somebody could watch without having watched any of my other neural network videos. They could just come in right here and use the library and understand kind of how it works. So I'm going to re-explain some basic stuff and I'm going to just use the library and um, get renamed next time. Okay. okay. Uh, so, so, so this is what I'm going to attempt to do. So now, let me get some water. This is definitely it for today for me. I can take next week off. I made so much content. Um, yeah, so I probably, I, I need to finesse the, you know, you can get, yeah, yes, I need to, the randomized selection and the learning rate, I, but I'm going to make a slider for the learning rate, I think, so. <coughs> okay. 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 So. Need this, and then I need to go to a neural network. Well, actually, let me push this up there. Factor directories. I guess I could make it to it as an admin, I could just push it directly. <laughs> now I see why it might be useful. But I, that's fine, I'm going to live by my testing mantra now. Oh, well, I'm so excited to go home for this weekend, <laughs> just rest. Okay. Um, some initializations are slower to converge. Yeah, that's what. Um, okay. uh, great, I'm going to merge this. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm so excited for this and to be done. Oh, this, my iPad sound effects are about to, uh, the battery's gonna die. I guess I could plug it in. I won't worry about that right now. All right. 
Hello! This, this video needs, wait, hold on. <laughs> Hello! This video needs a ding, a train whistle, it needs everything. Because I have spent a very long time making a lot of video tutorials about writing from scratch all a neural, building from scratch a neural network in JavaScript. And there were so many resources that I referenced, but I will probably, this is probably the primary one, Make Your Own Neural Network by Tariq Rashid. Anyway, this is the first coding challenge that I'm gonna do with all that neural network code. So you don't have to have watched any of those videos to watch this one. I'm going to explain the parts that you need for this video, and I'm just gonna make use of this Toy Neural Network JavaScript Library. So this, I've started this Toy Neural Network JavaScript Library. People are contributing to it. If you want to find out how this library was built, you have to watch like 10 to 12 short videos, but you could also just be here right now. So let's talk about, I, to, and to be honest, I am mostly making this video to test that library, because I just finished the library, and I just want to know that it works like I think it should work. And so what I need is a simple problem with a very known result that I can apply to the neural network, see if I get the correct results, and feel like, okay, the library works, I can start to maybe try to apply it to more interesting, complex problems. And this simple problem that I'm going to apply it to is a problem called XOR. So I don't, this is really just a pure sort of like mathematical exploration, basically, to see that the problem works. Um, but it will hopefully get at some pieces of things you need. So what I need is, for the neural network, I need a data set. The idea of the neural network is that I'm going to have some inputs. The inputs are going to go into the neural network, and then eventually some output is going to come out. So a neural network can be used for a kind of classification problem. For example, here is an image of a cat. Please tell me that it is a cat. Here is an image of a dog. Please tell me it's a dog. And I will get to, hopefully, some videos about image classification and other applications of machine learning and with neural networks in the future. But here, my input is going to be something incredibly simple. And it's going to be uh, two inputs that are either true or false, zero or one, because I want to solve the X or problem. So the reason why this problem is interesting <laughs> at least to me, sort of, yeah, no, it is to me, um, is that if I look at a truth table, meaning I say true, true here, and false, no. <laughs> it's been a very, very long day. This is like really my brain is completely melted. If I look at a truth table here and I say true, false, true, false. The and problem, for example, I only get a true if, if when, if in the, this is a grid, right? With and, I only get a true here, right? Both things have to be true to get a true. You true and false, I still get a false. False and false, I still get a false. False and true, I still get a false. Or, I'll get true if at least one is true. So I'll get true, 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 and false here. With both of those, I can draw a line to separate. Let's just I was trying to not have to erase anything, but I might as well. So this is or, right? This is, the res this is what or looks like, and I can draw a line right here, and I can separate all the trues from the false. The reason why the X or problem is kind of interesting is that, and I've, I, I talk about this a bit in some of the other previous videos that you can go look at, is that with X or, exclusive or, it is only true, we only get the true results if I have true, false, or fa false true. Two falses, I'm gonna get a false. And if both are true, I'm also gonna get a false. Now, try to draw one line to divide the trues from the falses. You cannot. I could draw like a curvy thing, or I could like kind of draw two lines, right? Here's all the trues. This is not a linearly separable problem. In the solution space of this problem, it's a simple two-dimensional space, I cannot draw a line. And so this is a kind of problem that you need a more sophisticated system. I mean, not necessarily really. You can imagine you really just need two, but this is what I'm gonna use the neural network for. And you can imagine building a circuit, right, where you have switches, and how can you get the LED only to turn on if one switch is on and one switch is off? This is the same problem. So you don't necessarily need a neural network to design that, but that's what we're gonna do. So the way that this is gonna work is the inputs, there's gonna be two inputs. If I think about that as like x1, x2. So what are the possible inputs? And I'm gonna express them as arrays. The possible inputs are one comma zero, zero comma one, oops, 
1 comma 1 and 0 comma 0. Can you see all that? These are the four possible configurations of true and false. True, false, false, true, 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 false, false. Those are my inputs. Those inputs are going to go in something called a hidden layer. They're going to get fed in to the hidden layer. And again, you can watch many, many videos where I go through lots of details about this. The inputs are connected. This is fully connected. Every input is connected to every hidden node. And each one of these little lines here, each one of these connections has a weight, which I'll just make as W. Then I'm going to have an output layer. Now in this case, I only need a single output because what do I want? The target output, the desired output I want is a 1 here, a 1 here, a 0 here, and a 0 here. Now why did I continue to put brackets around these? Why are these all arrays? So in neural network systems, you can have uh, uh, the system that I'm building here. You can have uh, inputs that have that are just that are a list of five things. The outputs could be five things, four things, one things. So in this case, I have two inputs and one output. But even if it's just one, the system is going to is always going to spit out. The library is always going to spit out an array. So these are both connected. So if you are curious about the feed forward algorithm, what's happening here is called feed forward. The inputs come in. A weighted sum gets all multiplied and added together, passed into this hidden layer. An activation function activates and sends it out into here with a weighted sum, and then an activation function activates and sends it out, and we get some result. And what we're going to do is we're going to call a function in the neural network library called train. We're going to tell the neural network, hey, this label data, this is labeled data. This data corresponds with this correct output. This input data corresponds with this correct output. And the neural network internally, when I give it the train method, is going to use a process called back propagation. And it's going to look at the error. It's going to say, well, if it got 0.2 and the desired output was 1, the error is 0.8. If it got 0.6 and the desired output is 0, it got an error of negative 0.6. And so it's going to take that error and move it and train the system by twisting all these dials here. <laughs> and <laughs> the problem with me doing this coding challenge, I just spent like six hours building the library, basically. I mean, I didn't, anyway, it's more complex than that. But um, so my brain's a little bit fried. But hopefully you're seeing this is the, the setup that I'm going to use. So I want to write the code that does this and visualizes and animates the system while I'm doing it. OK, here I am back. Whew. All right, so here's what I want to do. I am now I'm in a P5 sketch. Um, you can find the code both with the neural network coding, the neural network library repository, and it'll also be with the regular uh, coding train uh, repo with, with as a standalone example. Um, and so I'm going to add setup, and I'm going to add draw. And basically what I want to do is I need to have a neural network, I'm just use NN as the variable. And when I create a new neural network from this library, I have to give it its architecture. And I need to give it three things. I need to say, how many inputs are there? How many outputs are there? And also, how many hidden nodes are there? And by the way, I could have designed, you could try it. Try after this or try it with like six hidden nodes. See if it works better or works worse. <laughs> All right, so it's two, two, and one. So I'm going to say two, two, and one. So the neural network itself with all the stuff is all happening now in, that, um, in the library. Everything is set up in the library. Now, I need some training data. So I'm going to make a variable called training data, and I'm going to make that an array. I almost, you know what, I, I kind of want to make it a JSON file. No, nah, I'll just do it here. Because <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to make the point that you could be loading your data from somewhere else, but I'm going to make it an array, and it's going to have uh, of uh, four objects, inputs, 0, 0. Uh, and usually the word target is for the label. This is training data, so it has a known, uh, a known target. So that is going to give me a 0, right? Um, and so now I need, whoops, I need to copy this object one, two, three times. 
and I'm going to have, did I get this right? I think it looks right. I'm going to have 0, 0, 1, 0 will give me a 1, 0, 1 will give me a 1, and, zero, zero, and 1, 1 will give me a 0. So this is the training data now. Why do I feel like this syntax is wrong? But I think it's right. Okay, it's an array of objects with inputs, targets, inputs, targets, inputs, targets. Okay, what do I need to do now? Now, <laughs> I need to, in the draw loop, what I'm going to do, let's say background, zero, let's make a canvas. I'm gonna make the canvas uh, 400 by 400. Now, let's just even, let's run the code and just see that the canvas is there. Okay, it's there, move this over. We make this a little bit smaller. Give me a little bit more room in the console. Okay, okay, okay. Now, I'm, I'm gonna use the canvas for a second. Now, here's the thing. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna use a technique called stochastic, the, the, I'm gonna train it using a technique called stochastic gradient descent. So the gradient descent algorithm is built into the library. I've talked about it in other videos, but I'm gonna feed it one data point at a time and have it trained based on that rather than do it in batches. And, other videos, maybe I'll come back and look at batch gradient descent and that sort of batch learning. Um, so what I'm going to do is each time through draw, I'm going to say, um, give me a data point, a random data point from the training data. Then I am going to say, um, then I'm going to say neural network train, send it the inputs, and send it the targets. So this is me just saying, hey, every time through draw, pick a data point train, 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 pick a data point train. How many times can I say that? I just like got lost in my thoughts. All right, so now here's the thing. I can run this now. It's running, it's training it. Maybe I could even just like, can I look at the neural network? There it is. It's got, ooh, it's got all these biases and hidden nodes and inputs nodes and weights and matrices. All that stuff is in the library. And I could say, uh, feed forward, which I think is the, out, uh, the function for just um, sending it some input data and getting the output. Like I could ask right now, give me the results for 0, 0. Eh, it's not very good. That's not right. Uh, it, it probably hasn't trained enough yet. Give me a result for 1, 0, yeah. So it probably needs some more time to train. These things could be really, really slow. <laughs> One thing that I might do just right now is, well, maybe I should do this like a hundred times per, per cycle through draw. This is still adjusting the weights with every data point, but at least I'm doing it a hundred times faster now because draw is kind of slow. Uh, let's see, whoop. So wouldn't it be nice? Oh, look, it's getting better. It's going down to zero, right? We can see, ah, there we go. Let's try, um, let's try neural network. Uh, let's look at one comma zero. Oh, I'm getting a number of So it's working better. But wouldn't it be nice if I could kind of watch the process of it learning? So here's a way I could do that. Now, first of all, a separate coding challenge might be interesting to actually visualize a diagram of the neural network. Somebody in the chat mentioned TensorFlow Playground, which is a, a tool that you can use to like try out different neural network ideas and visualize them. But what I want to do here is I actually just want to visualize this truth table. So if I think of the canvas as the truth table, 0, 1, 0, 1, I can actually, uh, you know, there's no reason why I could, I don't have to pass in only these options into the neural network. I could, this could be a square for 0, 0. This could represent 0 0.250, 0 0.50, 0, 1, uh, 0 0.750, oops, I need another one, 1, 0, right? So I can actually, and then I could take that output, which is a single number, and map it to a grayscale color. So what I should see if I'm mapping, if zero is black and one is white, I should see, right, a big band here in the middle of a dark color with it fading uh, out, of a white color fading out to black around the edges where it gets to either zero, zero, or one, one. So let's see if I can make that happen. So while it's training, in addition to training it, I'm going to say, let me give me uh, like a variable called like resolution, I'll just say it equals 10, columns equals width, width divided by resolution, and um, rows equals height divided by resolution. Let's say, uh, let's loop through all the columns. And I just, by the way, in the library, I used I for rows with the matrix stuff, but kind of, I, uh, and loop through all the rows. 
And let's just, first, just to see what I, what I'm, that I'm drawing something that makes sense, I want an x value, which is i, i times resolution. I want a y value, which is j times resolution. And I want to draw a rectangle at x, y with a size of resolution. And I'm just going to say random, cut, fill, just for right now, random 255. And I probably, if I'm being careful here, I should probably use floor to make sure the number of columns and rows is always an integer, because well, some weird things could happen. OK, so let's do this. Oh, missing parentheses, sketch line 33. I'm staring at this. I do not see a missing parentheses. <laughs> Sketch line 33, oh my goodness, it's been such a long day. Huh, I really don't see a missing parentheses. Line 31, uh, resolutions. It's interesting that it's giving me this weird error, which has nothing to do with what the actual error is, which is that should be resolution. Uh, but I still have an error. Height, resolution, let i, i less than columns, i plus plus. Oh, what is going on? Let, 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 oh my goodness, four, four. Oh, oh, well, it's been such a long day. I should never do these coding challenges with it after streaming for six hours. Okay, four. There we see. Okay, so this is the space, oh, going crazy. YouTube compression algorithm probably going crazy. So you can see all those random colors. Now what I want to do is I want to turn this into data. So I want to say let input one equal map, I mean this is sort of silly, but I'm going to do it anyway, i, actually I'm just going to say i divided by columns, uh, let input 2 equal j divided by columns, and now I'm going to say uh, neural network feed forward input 1, input 2. And I might want to say columns minus 1 here, because I want the last one um, I is only going, I want the last one to be equal to 1.0. I don't know if this, and this should be rows. Okay, so I want to do that. Then I want to say uh, output equals this. Then I want to say uh, uh, bright, brightness. I'm going to actually just say, um, I'm going to say uh, let uh, color equal output index 0, it's an array, but it just has one number in it, times 255, and then I'm going to fill here, and here we go. Let's take a look at this. Let's watch the neural network. <laughs> hmm, <laughs> this doesn't seem right. Oh, give it some time, give it some time. Oh, flickery, flickery, flackery. Oh, you know what though? I don't like these, I don't like these, um, I don't like these lines in here. Something weird is happening. Let's give it, let's make it a higher resolution, 40, and let's say uh, no stroke. Let's come back to it. Let's refresh. Typo, I've got, I must have a typo somewhere. Well, it's like the wrong, something's wrong here. Um, uh, 444, oh, that's the typo from before. I think it's actually working, right? Let's think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should be getting true only if I, I'm down here or at the top. Look, that worked. You can see it sort of thinking about it, training. It takes a while. Now, what would be interesting is to watch it happen much more slowly. Let's make it 10 times as slow. It's really, it, how long is it going to take? Now, here's another thing that's interesting. A really important piece of neural networks is something called the learning rate. Now, the learning rate at the moment is not really exposed um, in the library, but there is a variable in the neural network library called learning rate, and it would be nice to see how the learning, the changing the learning rate actually affects the neural network from training. Training. So what I'm going to do is I want to create a slider, a learning rate slider, and I'm going to say learning rate slider equals create slider, and I'm going to give it a range from 0. 0, 0.1 to 0 0.1. I don't think higher than that really makes a lot of sense at the moment. And then I'm going to uh, let it have a step size of 0 0.01. Oh, and a default, sorry, it's going to start at 0 0.05 and a step size of 0 0.1. So just if we look at this, we can see there's a slider here. 
And what I can do is I can say in draw neural network dot learning rate. So there's a variable called LR in the library. There should probably be, I should probably add something like set learning rate or something. Um, but right now I'm just going to say, so the, when you look at the code after watching this video, there might be like a nicer function there, but I'm just going to set it to learning rate slider dot value. So this is what the slider currently is. So now in theory, we should be able to play with that learning rate. Something doesn't feel right here. 0.06. 0.1, oh yeah, that's right. And all the way down to the bottom, 0.01. So playing with this learning rate is an interesting parameter. I can make it really high, I can be really low. That, I, that is something that you could really change, it could really alter the behavior of a uh, neural network system. Now it is, uh, depending on how it is initialized, it can really get stuck or it can really like train itself to get to the right answer very, very quickly. You can see with just one Train data sets, like one data set, one data point per frame, 30 frames per second. Um, you, can see, you can see that now I could really like maybe make the learning rate really small and it's going to like finesse itself. But so these are the kinds of things. I don't know, maybe you have some more creative ideas. Let's, let's go back to um, a slightly higher resolution. Um, let's look at this. Let's see if I like, increase the learning rate to try to get somewhere kind of closer. Then I can kind of refine with a lower learning rate. We can see this is really working. So the neural network library, as far as I can tell, is working. This coding challenge is training using the library to visualize a two-dimensional space of a truth table to, uh, uh, to get the neural network to give us the results of the XOR problem. So I don't know, some things you might think about doing with this if you want to do your own variation of this is could you build a much more, a nicer interface? Could you think of a color in a more interesting way? What if you change the way the neural network is structured? Is it going to be better or worse? Um, could you visualize the actual neural network itself? And if you really, again, this video mostly exists because I wanted to test out the first version of that library. I'm planning to do a lot more with that library as well as uh, another library which I'll tell you about in a future video which is a simple JavaScript library for machine learning that's built on top of another library called deeplearn.js. I will include links to all those things in this video's description. I look forward to hearing your comments and thank you for watching. Oh yeah, change the orientation. Whoa. I'm in front of the slider. Something seems fishy. Wait, hold on. No, it's still right. This is still right. I don't think so. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh, you know what it is? Okay, interesting. This is very interesting. Hold on a second, I'm back. People are asking, sometimes, we see white on the edges and this black stripe down the middle. Sometimes if I can get lucky here, I can get it to be um, try again. So uh, I, the, the reason this is happening, I think I should probably explain this is that there's two solutions to the problem. <laughs> um, so hold on. So I don't know where I, I guess I have to come back and explain this. Oh yeah, um, you know what? Just give me a second. This is totally going to be worth it. All right, I'm actually back for a second. <laughs> Weird edit point there, probably, because people are asking how you were getting different results each time. Well, there's actually two solutions to the XOR problem, and I brought up another example. I will publish this code as well. Um, this is a processing version of the same thing that I did, and actually you could do this as an exercise, which is visualizing it in 3D. So the corners are true and false, and you can see two corners are optimized, are, are it being solved all the way down for True, false, false, true, and the other two corners, true, true, false, false. But if you think about it, what are you supposed to do in the middle? There's no, I mean, the, those, there's no 
this doesn't actually make sense if I'm sending in 0 0.5, 0.5. But if I'm thinking of that sol vast solution space, I can actually have the center of it kind of bend upwards, if you look at it in 3D, or the center of it could, it could be flipped. It could be actually the complete flipped version of this with the kind of bending downward, downwards. So you'll see if I run this multiple times, every once in a while I'm going to get a white stripe along this diagonal versus a black stripe along this diagonal. But the corners are always going to be white, white, black, black. Because the corners should always train for those situations of 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0 correctly. Um, so uh, one thing that, again, just to, uh, let's see if I can get, let's see if I can make this like really train a lot. I'm going to have it do 1,000 cycles per frame. Um, and I'll do like a big learning rate and then a low learning rate. Let's see if I can get, uh, <laughs> oh, my soundboard went. And by the way, they're also, um, shoot. I, yeah, sometimes they get stuck because they're like fighting to figure out which is the right solution. It should like arbitrarily like, there we go. All right, so hold on. So let me try training it like 5,000 times per frame, which it sounds crazy, but it's really very little math that's going on in this tiny neural network. And what you're going to see, hopefully, uh, is that you know it, it's, it's converged on this solution really quickly. Ah, it converged on that solution really quickly. And sometimes it's going to get actually a little bit stuck because I'm not really being very thoughtful about this. There's probably a nice way, and it really just depends on the neural network itself. It starts with all of these weights being random values. So you might by accident get like a really good set of weights that are already close to one of those solutions. That's the way it'll converge on that other solution. So, um, so I encourage you to, and I can just sort of hit refresh a bunch of times, and just sometimes it's gonna get kind of stuff to think about how I could uh, do some research of how I might get um, different solutions. Let's, let's see if I can get this to train for the other way, bent around the other way. I'm going to run this processing code again uh, really quick. And so you can think about one exercise you might do is ca what are some ways that you can visualize this uh, solution space? And what are, what, you know, is there a way that you can get it to not get stuck, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, um, so I'm going to let this run. I'm going to go, I'm going to leave. This coding challenge is complete. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you come up with some creative ideas. Um, oh, obviously, this, I mean, not obviously, but I, you know, this is really just a technical demonstration at this point. Hopefully, we can make the neural network library better, and I'm going to eventually use some other machine learning libraries, like something called ML5, um, which is <laughs> not released yet, or sort of is. And I think it's called ML5. I shouldn't have said that. Um, but it's a, a new library that I'm working on with other uh, folks here at ITP that's built on top of a library called DeepLearn.js, which is really uh, amazing. Lots of really pow a powerful, robust uh, machine learning, deep learning library for the browser that runs on top of WebGL. So much more to say about that in another video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Oh, oh my goodness, the learning rate has been doing nothing this whole time. Let's just, let's just pretend that's not the case. Oh yeah. <laughs> no wonder. I mean, I can't, there's nothing I can do about that. But I, it doesn't matter because, you know, I was like, in the end, it's really like, that's interesting to see. Like, if it, now I can actually really use the learning rate. Yeah, it's not getting stuck anymore. Why not? Let me see if I can get stuck. I think the answer is, I'm going to get it stuck. There we go. I got it stuck. If I increase the learning rate or decrease it for a little while, no, it's really stuck. So that's an interesting thing to solve. So I don't think that really matters. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. I can redo this coding challenge if it was no good. Um, I've made so many videos today. Um, yeah. All right, uh, thank you everybody. I'm done for today. I will read some random numbers. I don't have any sound. I'm exhausted, it's 6.45. I don't even have my phone up here. I have some text messages which came through. Oh, um, uh, yes, if not too late, but okay, if too late. Uh, all right, so I've gotta go. Um, I don't even think I have the energy to read random numbers. <laughs> I have to do it though, right? I hope my phone is downstairs in my office and not lost.
29,137, 18,688, 97, I'm really doing this in a perfunctory fashion. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, this was a lot of live streaming today. I will, um, I'm almost certain I won't be back until next Friday. I don't know what time it will be next Friday, but there will be another, and I, I know, I'm hoping next Friday to make improvements to this library and do like MNIST as an example with it, okay? Um, thank you everyone, and I will see you in the future. Um, so actually, let me just quickly answer a question. Darko Aqua is asking any forum for discussion. So there is a Slack channel for patrons of the Coding Train. You could sign up at patreon.com slash coding train. I believe there is a Discord that I, uh, that I signed up for at one point. That's a community Discord. There's a Reddit. Uh, there's the Processing Forum, which is a great forum for asking questions about processing or P5. Um, and I'm open to people starting up other platforms for the community to engage with each, with each other as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I have to hit stop streaming. It's very confusing. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I have to just I have to take a break from all this. <laughs>